Hello and welcome to the Skyrider channel. My search for the perfect middleweight adventure star motorcycle continues. And today I present you the 2015 Honda VFR 800X, the Crossrunner. I know it's not good to start on negative, but it's hard to reach the key, especially with that sat nav in place. So I think winter gloves will be a challenge. I will be comparing uh, the Crossrunner to the Triumph Tiger 800 XRX as well as the Yamaha MT-09 Tracer throughout the video. The links to the test ride I did on the other two bikes can be found in the description below. Straight away, the Crossrunner is a familiar place for me coming from a CB500X. Controls are pretty much the same as well as handlebar position, except the traction control switch feels like an afterthought and the bar ends have been chopped off. The foot pegs are higher up than those on the Tiger, very similar to the Tracer. It's not cramped, but I guess you can call it a sportier riding position from waist down. The mirrors are good, they give an excellent view of what's going on behind, but unfortunately the test bike has a loose one, I mean nothing a spanner can't fix. This is the first uh, V4 engine bike I have ridden, so I'm not quite sure what to expect from uh, this uh, 106 horsepower 16 valve VTEC engine. But there's one thing I do realise very soon is how punchy it is. And when you open it up past 6000 RPM, the thing just flies. One of the sales guys was with me for the whole test ride, so really I have to stick to uh, whatever speed he. To be honest, I'm unlikely to go full throttle uh, for everyday use anyway, so the one thing you do need to know is the VFR 800 won't disappoint in the power and acceleration department. It's a really good bike, good engine. Disappointed me was the non adjustable windscreen with inadequate wind protection. Both the Tiger and the Tracer feature adjustable screens and are more effective for the 5 foot 9 bloke sitting behind them. Even the CB500X actually has better wind protection, and I think the whole front section also shakes a little bit under acceleration, which you can feel through the bars. But in general, vibration shouldn't be your concern from the well padded seat and the rubber covered pegs. The hydraulic clutch is nice and light, but not too artificial. The gear change is extra smooth, unlike my clunky CB500X. In this case, I cannot find a clear winner between the VFR, the Tiger and the Tracer. I really like the full digital dash. It's really nice and clear. If you prefer a normal or more conventional LCD, then the Tracer's display is also a very good one. I feel the Tiger's dash is a little bit dated compared to the Japanese rivals. The gel-like seat uh, is wide, soft and comfortable. The Tracer definitely scores the lowest in terms of comfort. However, you could argue that it's not worth paying £2,000 extra for another cylinder and actually less power therefore settle for the firm seat and spend the money on coffee breaks instead. The bike is happy doing 35 miles an hour in 6th gear but you have to let the RPM catch up a bit before you get the kick. The Yamaha Tracer in my opinion has more torque lower down and uh, it's not to say that Honda is incompetent it's just a different kind of engine character a bit like eating a peach and a nectarine. So let's get some of the downsides out of the way on this uh, Honda Crossrunner. Uh, it's the lack of handguards and cruise control. I don't think um, they've thought about it, you know, considering the competitors are doing it free of charge. Um, I couldn't see the power socket either. It could be just me not looking hard enough. Then the MPG. Honda says 44 miles to the gallon, which isn't that economical these days. And the Tiger will return over 60 miles to the gallon according to um, the sales guy at Triumph. 
I know he can't have performance and fuel economy at the same time, but it doesn't make a difference over long distance. At slow speed, the cross runner gives me a lot of confidence, and the 240 plus kilograms of curb weight isn't that issue. It's only noticeable when you're manhandling it at uh, zero speed. It's the heaviest out of the three bikes. I've managed to keep my feet up for the entire test ride, which shows how well balanced the bike is. The front brakes, the twin disc ones, are very good on the cross runner. I think the back one lacks a little bit, so you have to push harder with your right foot. And like I mentioned, the riding position with my knees slightly higher up, slightly uh, more bent, is not uh, not an issue. You know, I think it's just uh, adjusting to the new bike. This white on black dash display works extremely well in bright sunlight. As you can see here, it turns into kind of a goldy colour, but it's very good. I like it. So we know it's got a lively engine. What about the handling? Well, for me, the bike handles very well. It's well composed. Going around corners and bends, it does give you a lot of confidence. And Honda says the traction control will well, kind of a safety measure to make sure you don't lose the back end. And all put together, you know, with ABS and everything, I think it's a really nice package. As you can see going around a number of roundabouts, you don't really have to pay that much attention, you just need to think about it and go. And that's a good positive thing about the bike. I know I mention uh, the word confidence a lot, quite a few times in this video, but that's how I feel like a bigger engine bike. Upgrading is what it should give you. It shouldn't scare you. It should give you the encourage you to go faster and use its power, but at the same time, give you that sort of reassurance. I'd like to say a big thank you to Colin and the guys and girls at um, the Honda dealership in Crowthorne. I think it's called Hatfield Honda, um, because they found well, they've got the bike that I could test right all the other places and have run out. So if you are nearby, uh, give them a call and pop in. Very nice. Much more fun. Yeah, I think the acceleration is, yeah. is good. It sounds really nice. It sounds really nice. Yeah, with that type of yeah, it's yeah. good enough. It's not, it's not too, uh, too bad. I guess the main stand comes standard, does it? And that comes with the kit, with the kit yeah. Another highlight of this bike has to be the lights. Oh my god, they're so good. The twin LED headlight is the best I have seen on any bike. The Tracer has LED, but only on one side, and the Tiger has twin lights, but it's not LED. It's a shame I couldn't pick and choose the best parts of different bikes and put them into one. I like the front. Um, the indicators, uh, they mount it higher up, so it's in line with the levers. And by the way, the levers are, f are fully adjustable, and it's LED everywhere. Same story in the back, the brake lights and the indicators. Uh, we know the VFR has a single-sided swing arm in the back, and passenger foot pegs, they don't have the rubber cover. There's a remote control for the rear shock adjustment chain indicator so it's well nicely put together really good build quality and um, it does look premium
feels premium. And the bike itself is slightly wider than my CB500, and it's got a, a larger fuel tank and wider seat in the back. You can also get the Honda Panniers for £700 a pair. So overall, a very nice bike. Really like it. Big thumbs up. However, the price. I don't think I'll be rushing to buy one yet. Maybe it's time to wait for a good second-hand one, because you know Honda build quality is good, and it will last a long time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.